while swimming in the pool of microbiology. It's time to examine a facultative anaerobe, pathogenic gram-negative coccus, Neisseria, which does not like to roam around alone, so always hangs out in pairs, hence called diplococci. Now, each member of the pair, called coccus, shaped like kidney bean, sticks with its partner with adjacent flat or concave sides, making a small burger-shaped diplococcus. The genus Neisseria is one of the genera included in the family Neisseriaceae, while the other being Branhemella, Moraxella, and Acinetobacter. Two pathogenic species of Neisseria include Neisseria meningitides, or meningococcus, causing meningitis, which is the inflammation of the protective membranes covering the brain and spinal cord, or life-threatening sepsis called meningococcemia, and Neisseria gonorrhoeae, or gonococcus, causing a sexually transmitted disease gonorrhoeae. Both lack flagella and are catalase-positive and oxidase-positive as well, which is a key test in its identification. So, talking about the meningococcus or Neisseria meningitides first, I would like to mention the structures that help these bacteria to colonize and affect the host. So, these virulence factors of meningococcus include a polysaccharide capsule surrounding the bacterium and is antiphagocytic if there are no specific antibodies to coat or opsonize the bacterium. Based on different polysaccharide capsules, and meningitides is classified into 13 serogroups, A, B, C, D, E, H, I, K, L, X, Y, Z, and W135. Among them, meningitis is usually caused by serogroups A, B, and C. So these are often referred to as major serogroups, while others being minor. Another one is endotoxin or lipopolysaccharide. The meningococci can release blebs of endotoxins or lipopolysaccharides, causing blood vessel destruction, hemorrhage, and sepsis. Tiny, round, red dots of hemorrhage of blood vessel called petechiae or a petechial rash is seen on skin. This same hemorrhaging process can also damage the adrenal glands. Then we have IgA1 protease that cleaves IgA antibody in half and helps in evasion of humoral immune response. Also, Neisseria meningitides can extract iron from human transferrin via a non-energy requiring mechanism. And pili of Neisseria meningitides allow attachment to human nasopharyngeal cells and undergo antigenic variation to avoid attack by the immune system. Although Neisseria meningitides has all of these virulence factors and entering through nasopharynx through inhalation of respiratory droplets, it attaches itself to the epithelial cells with the help of pili and constitute a part of normal flora here. I would say carriers are quite lucky as this asymptomatic nasopharyngeal infection allows them to develop anti-meningococcal antibodies, so they are immunized naturally. Well, rarely the bacteria will invade the bloodstream to cause meningococcal disease, resulting in meningitis or deadly sepsis called meningococcemia. Now, the fulminant meningococcemia is a severe condition with high fever, hemorrhagic rashes, and circulatory shock. The hemorrhages may take place in different parts and sites of body, including skin, causing petechiae that I mentioned before, and bilateral hemorrhage into adrenal glands, also known as waterhouse friedrichsen syndrome. Its frequent complication is disseminated intravascular coagulation, or DIC, which is a serious disorder in which the proteins that control blood clotting become overactive. Small blood clots develop throughout the bloodstream and block small blood vessels, while the meningitis is an inflammation of the protective membranes covering the brain and spinal cord and has a sudden onset with intense headache. 
stiff neck, fever, vomiting, irritability, and lethargy. A bulging open anterior fontanel may be a sign of meningitis in neonates, while older may display a stiff neck as well as positive Kerning sign, which is when a patient lies flat and has thighs bent at the hip and the knees at 90 degrees, and when you try to straighten the knee, it elicits pain and is resisted, and Brzezinski signs in which the patient lies flat and you lift their head off the table and the patient lifts their legs up involuntarily. Also, septic or reactive arthritis may also develop as a result of meningitis. While the microbiological diagnosis involves the gram stain and culture of the meningococcus from blood, cerebrospinal fluid, petechial scrapings, or nasopharyngeal swabs, Neisseria grow best on blood agar that has been heated, so that the agar turns brown, called chocolate agars. Now this chocolate agar with antibiotics called the Thayer Martin VCN is the classic medium for culturing Neisseria, where V stands for vancomycin, that kills gram-positive organisms, C stands for colistin, polymyxin, that kills all gram-negative organisms except Neisseria. N stands for nistatin, that eliminates fungi. Only Neisseria, both Neisseria meningitides and Neisseria gonorrhoeae, are able to grow on this culture medium, and addition of high concentration of carbon dioxide further promotes the growth of Neisseria, while in the laboratory, the differentiation between the Neisseria species is based on Neisseria meningitides' ability to ferment both maltose and glucose. Quite easy to remember, since there is both an N and G in meningitides, while Neisseria gonorrhoeae ferments only glucose and not maltose, and that you can remember as G for gonorrhea and G for glucose. Rapid antigen detection, or nucleic acid amplification tests, on CSF and blood are sensitive and reliable, while the provisional identification is by microscopy, when kidney-shaped gram-negative cocci are seen within polymorphonucleosides. Confirmation of identification is based on cultures, colonial morphology, gram stain appearance, positive oxidase test and biochemical reactions, including carbohydrate fermentation we discussed. Meningococcal infection is life-threatening and rapidly progressive. So, you don't need to wait for laboratory confirmation to start treatment. Penicillin or cefotaxime are first-line treatments, while chloramphenicol is still used for patients with a true penicillin allergy. All close contacts to patient can be given chemoprophylaxis using rifampicin, ceftriaxone, or ciprofloxacin to eradicate nasopharyngeal carriage. Meningococcal group C vaccine and tetravalent A, C, Y, and W135 polysaccharides vaccine is available for travelers to high incidence areas while Group B vaccine is being developed. In case of an outbreak, careful surveillance, early diagnosis, and immediate treatment of suspect cases is done. While if large-scale epidemics occur, mass vaccination of the entire population should be considered. So, here we are done with the Neisseria meningitides, but we are still left with Neisseria gonorrhea. So, do watch the next section for that.